so I'm working on the cooling system for the Subaru EZ30 swap on my 914. I have the radiator mocked up in place here. And you can see my brackets um, that hold the radiator to the one inch steel frame that I made here. And then these are just steel bars that run over to the nose of the car and those low profile um, screw heads uh, should get covered up okay by the weather stripping and there's actually uh, welded in nuts behind the bar here i just have a screwdriver through it to hold it um, but typically it's going to be held down with these um, stainless steel hex bolts and then moving down to the um, the front of the radiator, I have the floor of my ducting um, pretty much ready to go. And so I'm using uh, 50 thousandths aluminum, uh, which is basically like 18 gauge. Um, it's pretty light and it does have some flex, but, um, but really not bad. I'm pretty happy with it. And um, so you can see I have a bend that I'm going to use to rivet the sidewalls onto. Um, there's my template there, so you can see there's the other piece. Uh, and then I am also using um, this weather stripping that I bought. This is kind of like a generic door seal weather stripping and has the um, little rubber tube that runs on the top of it. So in this case, it's, that's called a top bulb. And um, so that allows me, as I bring the radiator into place, it kind of um, really seals off that point there. I'm really trying to lose as little airflow as possible. And then I did a, a piece of that weather stripping at the front edge, but I, it was a little tight, and also I felt like it was just going to get chewed up by, by this, the mesh that I have there. So I actually just used a razor blade and cut the top bulb off. So that's just a rubber weather stripping. Uh, fits very nice. Really happy with how that came out. Continuing over to this side, you can see I made a cardboard template. Um, this was actually about the third version because I really wanted to make sure these sidewalls worked out well. Um, and so you can see how it, it slides onto the top bar and under this tab. There'll be holes drilled eventually uh, for the retaining bolts. And then if I come over here, I actually have my first side actually made. So this is a bit of a job to get this cut pretty well, but um, you can see I also have the flange bent already that's going to go uh, on the top portion here. And here is the driver's side sidewall for the ducting in place, not installed yet, but just mocked up. And you can see how I left these gaps all the way around. And that's because I'm planning to put more of that weather stripping with the top, be um, top bulb. And again, trying to just make everything fit as snug as possible. I'll probably actually have to trim some of those down in a few spots because once the weather stripping goes on um, it definitely makes for a tight fit but that's what i'm going for and i will uh, one of the next steps after i'm happy with the weather the stripping um, is that i will drill and rivet the sidewall to the floor and then do the same on the passenger side I will probably also add like a bead of uh, silicone or something there just to make sure that all those edges are nice and um, airtight. Okay, I had to make a little adjustment to the sidewall here of the front ducting. Um, I've got the rear weather stripping there that's going to sit up against the radiator. That's actually fitting, fitting pretty nicely. And then uh, this was the one that was a little trickier to get. Um, right, but I'm actually pretty happy with it. You can see there's a little fold in it right there. Um, that's just being pushed down by the, by the contour of the sheet metal. 
Um, but I'm actually pretty happy with how this is fitting. The top here needs to be pushed, is going to get pushed inward. Um, so that'll determine where I'm going to put those holes when it's time. Um, and then uh, down here at the bottom also, um, you can see it ended up creating a little bit of a gap. But I'm not so worried about that because I have the, the bent flange below it. You can just maybe see the metal there. So I'm just going to push that up against it, make sure I get all the tolerances as close as I can. And then I'll drill both pieces in place for the rivets and, um, and go ahead and rivet it. And one nice thing about this design is that even after I get this entire front three-piece section done with the other side, um, I can just remove the bolts or whatever's holding the top of the radiator. Um, I can remove those. And then the radiator just tilts back toward, um, you know, toward the car. And it'll be easier to remove the entire assembly and then put it back in place. So, uh, to me, it looks like it's working out pretty well so far. All right, so I've got uh, what I consider pretty close to a final version of this front ducting um, without the top so far. Um, you can see how I've got holes drilled in the aluminum uh, to be able to line up with the, the welded in nuts from behind the frame there. I went ahead and made these holes a bit bigger so that it gives me some wiggle room to get the adjustment just right. And so I've got both sides uh, done that way. And then I have the rivets in place down here to hold the sidewalls to the floor. And then all the weather stripping is in. So I'm feeling pretty happy with that, uh, uh, with that result there. Uh, so we'll see how it goes with the radiator in place. All right, uh, the next thing I'm working on here is the top uh, to go across the front of the radiator. So I've made this cardboard template and um, you can see the cutouts there for the front latch and then I've got holes made in the cardboard where I need them to attach to the side walls and the frame structure down below. And uh, so I use this template to lay out my aluminum sheet. And, you know, you can just see kind of a rough version of it. Um, I actually purposely made the dimensions a little oversized. I went um, an extra three-eighths on each end compared to the cardboard template. And then I added about an eighth of an inch um, down here at the bottom because I think that's going to close the gap to the radiator a little better um, Better to have too much material and shave a little bit away than not enough uh, So we'll see how this works. I'm going to cut it out So you can still see that it, it you know, it's kind of a rough draft version, but it one it, it is one that works um, uh, Right here, I'm going to actually open up some of these gaps a little bit more and then I'm going to use some of the weather stripping without the top bulb just to kind of finish it out and to try to close some of those gaps to let as little air out of that as possible. Um, it does seem like when the hood is closed that some of the contours on the hood also help to close up those gaps. So we'll see how that works once it's all actually functioning. So there it is. the different uh, parts of the exit shroud riveted together uh, which you saw the video of but I didn't really talk about it much um, you can see I just basically created these triangular sidewalls and <clears throat> and then the, the cover that goes um, toward the floor of the trunk and just a couple of bends with the sheet metal break and then rivets um, you can see from behind here 
And then I just put more of the weather stripping to kind of seal things up. And um, I think it's a design that will work, but we'll see once it's really, uh, really functioning. You can see here how the shroud is going to sit down against the floor. There you can see the louvers and the extra holes that I've added for ventilation out the floor of the front trunk. And then the shroud just sits down in here. Uh, and you can see how the weather stripping uh, fairly well matches the contour of the floor there. And then once this is sealed up against the radiator, uh, you can see more of the weather stripping along the edge there and then down on the floor there. I haven't actually figured out how I'm going to mount the bottom of this exit shroud to the floor, but I think once I spend some time scratching my head over it, I'll be able to figure out something that'll work pretty well. And, um, and you can also see how the exits from the the halves, the edges of this um, Toyota Celica radiator um, are going to be able to be set up with some elbows and hose to uh, the plan at this point is to have them exit around the middle there, down at the bottom of the trunk. And here's the exit on the other side. Right there. Here's one final shot of the inlet uh, going into the intake shroud. Then we've got the radiator. And then finally, the outlet shroud going to the floor right there.